Hi everyone, it's Andrea and I'm here today with the final part of my October wrap up. If you remember I did one that went from the 1st to the 16th and then of course I did Spookathon so it was a wrap up from the 17th to the 23rd and so these are the last few books that I read in October. Um, now there were only four that I actually completed. Two of them were ebooks and two were physical books. The first ebook, and I will put a picture up here, was The Toy Breaker by Roy Chester. Now I got this book free from uh, NetGalley in exchange for a fair and honest review. I gotta be honest, they had nothing to worry about. I loved this book, I thought it was fantastic. So basically, The Toy Breaker tells the story of um, a profiler named Hannah Nightingale who's brought in by a police force in a town or city called Granton to help catch this person called the Toy Breaker. The Toy Breaker kidnaps children from their beds. Um, all the parents are single parents and left behind is a broken homemade wooden clown as a calling card. And as the story progresses, it gets more and more sinister and Hannah and the police have to catch the toy maker before something even worse happens. So instead of just taking one child here and there, the toy breaker has a plan to which to kill lots of children in one go. Um, and this is the story and it was a fantastic story. It was so, it was pacey, it was, it was interesting, the characters were believable, you know, they would make mistakes, they'd admit it, they'd move on. The police were hard, but they were also allowed to be sensitive to the crimes. Absolutely adored this book, absolutely fantastic. I gave it five out of five stars, and I would hope, hopefully be able to read something by Roy Chester again, because I really, really enjoyed it. The second ebook uh, I read, and again, I will put a little picture here, was um, something called Killer Cupcake, oh, I can't even say it, Killer Cupcakes by Milda Harris. This was one of those cosy mysteries. I really enjoyed it, and I gave it, what did I give it? I gave it, I gave it a three out of five, just because I didn't think it was long enough. Um, the characters were great, the story was good, I did enjoy it, I just would have liked it to have been longer. So this tells the story of a, a girl, I can't even remember her name, who goes to work at this a cupcake place in Hollywood, it's their opening day and they've got a famous person to come and open it and at the opening this famous star is poisoned by a poison put into one of the cupcakes and this girl and one of the other employees decides to try and find out who killed this star rather than leave it to the police, as you do. Um, liked the story, thought it was great, fun, easy read. I would have liked to have been longer. Milda Harris is more than capable of writing full length novels. I would like to see more dynamic between the characters, learn more about them and see a deeper plot because she's more than capable. I really enjoyed it. So on to the two physical books that I read at the end of October and one was the one that was left over from Spookathon and that is Stephen King's The Bazaar of Bad Dreams which is a short story collection. There are also two poems in here by King. Now again, I gave this three out of five stars. Um, Stephen King is a master storyteller. The only reason it dropped to three stars was because I didn't like the poetry particularly and there were a few stories where I was like, ah, and they weren't ah in a good way. There were, however, some stories in here that were excellent. Uh, comes to mind was Under the Weather. That one is still haunting me now. The Dune was very good and Obits. They were three of the best stories in this collection. There are also other ones. I mean, Ur was very good. My Lady One was very good, but it was let down by a few of the other stories, which were, I don't think, as strong as the others. But yeah, I mean, I, I did in, I did enjoy it. I, mean, I would probably pick it up and reread it at some point, especially the ones I didn't enjoy as much, just to see if I can get something a bit more out of them next time. So that was Stephen King, The Bazaar of Bad Dreams. And of course, the last book I read in November was Carol Lombard, 20th Century Star by Michelle Morgan. Now I've done a full review of this and I will link that below. I gave this five out of five stars. Carol Lombard truly comes to life in this book. I would recommend anyone that's into their Hollywood history and Hollywood movie stars of the golden age to pick up a copy. It is a fantastic book. And again, this was sent to me by the History Press um, for a honest and fair review. So those are the last four books that I read in October. I did start uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and uh, an ebook that I'm reading on my Kindle. Um, those will probably be in my November wrap-up because even though I am doing non-fiction November, I am still reading some fiction as well because it's nice to break up all that non-fiction because sometimes it's like, whoa, brain overload. So 
in keeping with the fact that I'm not just going to be reading the non-fiction I'm going to pick a book from my TBR jar. Now so far every book we've picked from this jar has been a non-fiction one so let's see if that trend will continue or will we get something fiction. I'm dreading it being something like Rome by Zola or <laughs> Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov so but you know I will read them it might just take me a bit longer than normal so, so I'm gonna I don't take the one off the top, I do stick my hand in and swizzle it around but as you can see, I can't see what they are, they're off and up. So we got a yellow ticket, I think it was yellow last time as well. I think they've all been yellow. I'm dreading this. One is... Oh, Under the Rainbow by John Carlyle. So John Carlyle, I think he was a publicist in Hollywood, so again it's a non-fiction book. Keeping up the trend. There are fiction books in here as well. There's quite a lot of fiction in there and we're just not picking them up. Um, who was friends with uh, Judy Garland Marrow and various other stars. So that will be very interesting. I haven't read it yet. I picked it up from Amazon really cheap. So again, another book to add to my non-fiction November tally. I'll go and pull that one out now. Um, for those of you who were looking for a Marrow Spotlight this week, I haven't done one because the show I'm in is on in two weeks. I've got one week of rehearsals left next week and then it's show week. So my plan is to this coming week I'm on a very early shift I finish at three o'clock so I'm hoping to get some videos filmed in between work and rehearsals um, including my Marilyn spotlights and then the week of the show I'm actually off all week so I'm hoping to get a load of Marilyn spotlights in the bag so we can get on and I've got one to put up every week so there will be one so that's why there wasn't one in last week because the show is very very soon so I hope you're going to come and see that but anyway, so that was my October wrap up and my November TBR jar um, book. So I am currently watching all of your wrap ups and your hauls because I love them. I will be back um, with a Marilyn spotlight fairly soon. I will be back with an update on how I'm doing for nonfiction November. Um, so if you've liked this video and you want to know uh, any more about any of the books that I've mentioned or if you've read them and want to leave me a comment about what you thought, that'd be great because I'm always open to other people anything you can recommend again leave a comment below so if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up share it with your friends leave a comment and of course subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and i will see you soon now happy reading everybody bye bye